We now recognize more than ever that diversity is a strength. And if we bring more people into the conversation, in particular, women and people of color and people with disabilities, people who don't get heard in science and policy decisions, that is how we are going to solve these problems. It's not just old white guys in lab coats. Um, that's not who scientists are. I don't think the message of the changing climate is one of doom and gloom. It's one of a hell of a challenge. We're here in uh, Yellowstone and this is amazing. Hi, I'm Jess Phoenix. I'm a volcanologist and the executive director of the nonprofit research organization Blueprint Earth. One of the things that I have always appreciated about geology is it doesn't just give you the key to understanding you know, how the mountains formed, uh, but it also gives you the opportunity to go out into the mountains and see and experience this stuff and feel like you're just one small piece in this giant scheme that somehow is held together and functions and we live. I'm here in Kawaijin Volcano. I'm actually in the crater at the summit of the volcano. And behind me is the largest acidic lake in the world. Volcanology is the study of volcanoes, and that covers both active erupting volcanoes and ones that have erupted in the past, maybe even millions of years ago. Over 500 million people around the world live in the shadow of active volcanoes. That means that they're potentially at risk. When I was in high school, I had a really bad experience with science. I actually um, got a C in high school chemistry. It really put me off. I thought science wasn't for me. Any scientist we've seen on TV, when I was growing up, it was Mr. Wizard and then Bill Nye the science guy. They're both guys uh, and, you know, they're wonderful, but they didn't look like me. I think it's really important to note that if you don't see yourself doing something, if you don't see yourself reflected in a particular career field or a sport or a hobby, it's much harder to imagine yourself doing that thing. So I went into college and I started studying English, but I did take some geology while I was an undergrad, and I didn't even know that geology was a career option. A few years later, I found a program at the Cal State University system. I went to Cal State Los Angeles. They actually allow you to take a, um, a master's degree in just about anything. So I was able to really dive into geology at a, a decently high level. And I ended up working at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. I'm gonna spin around so you guys can see back there. That's the source of the big cloud. Um, there are fumaroles actively degassing, uh, and that's because there's a magma chamber right down below. The first time I ever set foot on a volcano, like knowingly, and one that could erupt was Mauna Loa. And the scale of this volcano is just enormous. I mean, it makes up more than half of the Big Island of Hawaii's land mass. And the summit of the volcano is a couple of miles across by several miles long. Uh, so I stood up on the, the rim of it and saw a sea of silvery, shiny lava that was younger than I am. And it, it sort of broke my brain to think that that whole area had been active flowing lava when I was two years old. And having the, the ability to study this and work with really great scientists, these guys had been doing this for years. They were all older male scientists. and. You know, they, they let me sit there and have my moment of, you know, mind-blowing wonder. And when I caught up to them, they said, yeah, we still feel that every time we're up here too. Uh, and, and that showed me that I was really into something special. So I think these are all connected. Here, here, and here, we've now found water on the surface. Um, but then these two, A and B, are new. People who are on the climate denier side like to say that volcanoes produce more CO2 emissions than humans. That is a lie. Volcanoes produce 1% of all of the emissions that humans produce in terms of carbon dioxide. So they're not a climate change driver, and that is a big problem. We need to educate people, and so this misinformation and these lies don't spread. I decided to run for United States Congress for the 2018 election cycle because I was represented by a climate science denier. 
Even though I didn't win the election, uh, I actually have a really good platform now to talk to people from all different backgrounds. And that is, that is one thing running for office gives you, is a complete fearlessness of talking to anyone about anything at any time. It's, it's a difficult task to introduce someone like Jess Phoenix. She's a volcanologist, a public scientist, an explorer. It's Jess Phoenix. It really isn't about the people who are on stage now, it's about you all, because you all are the future of science, you're the future of research, you're the future of humanities. The student population does not look like the stereotypical view of an old white man scientist in a lab coat. And my goal is really to encourage them to keep going despite the obstacles that they're gonna face, because they will face obstacles in their career. So many times in the course of my career, I've had a door shut. And I have it relatively easy compared to a lot of people out there who are trying to make their way through the professional world. I think I can be better served uh, advocating for science and advocating for bringing more diversity into science. I founded Blueprint Earth, which is an interdisciplinary environmental research nonprofit. We work with students to get them out into the field doing environmental research. We do this at no cost to the students. So students of all different backgrounds have access to this kind of science. So Blueprint Earth has 76% women participating. We have 54% people of color and 60% of our participants come from low income backgrounds. It's pretty diverse group naturally. And I love being able to point to our Blueprint Earth social media and say, this is the face of science and this is the future of where we're going. Until we start showing on the big and small screen that people come from different backgrounds, different you know, races, ethnicities, religions, um, we aren't gonna see that science is as diverse as the human population in our planet. The planet's gonna be here long after we're gone and it will continue to evolve and change and that just blows my mind in a really good way. Hi everyone, I'm Sari, the producer of Her Stories. Click here to watch more episodes, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know what other people and topics you want to see on the show. And make sure to subscribe to Now This Her. Thanks for watching.